Thank you so much. As you know, we have been uh, in the series over the last couple of weeks on uh, relationship deal breakers and game changers. And uh, we are completing, finishing up that series today. I know it's going to be a blessing to you, so we want you to tune in. Uh, if you're tweeting, um, I don't know, ha hashtag game changer. Hashtag game changer. We're going to always refer to the Word of God because this is not a motivational seminar. You can, you can go to a marriage conference, and uh, there, there are people that are special, specially trained uh, in relationship building. Pastor Jeanette and I, we're, we're spiritual coaches. We're professional spiritual coaches, which means we're going to always refer you to the Word of God. Amen? All right. So Philippians chapter 2. Let's begin reading in verse 1. It says, So by whatever appeal to you there is in our mutual dwelling in Christ, by whatever strengthening and consoling and encouraging uh, our relationship in him affords, by whatever uh, persuasive incentive there is in love, by whatever participation in the Holy Spirit we share, and by whatever depth of affection and compassion and compassionate sympathy, fill up and complete my joy by living in harmony. Listen to these words of Paul to the church at Philippi. He says, fill up and complete my joy by living in harmony and being of the same mind and one purpose, having the same love, being in full accord and of one harmonious mind and intention. Do not or do nothing from factional motives through contentiousness, strife, selfishness, or for unworthy ends or prompted by conceit and empty arrogance. Instead, in the true spirit of what? Humility. In the true spirit of what? Humility. Lowliness of mind. Let each regard the others as better than and superior to himself. Thinking, this is what humility is. It is regarding others as better than and superior to himself, thinking more highly of one another than you do of yourselves. Let not every man uh, look not every man on his own things, but every but every man also on the things of others. Verse six. Who although uh, or verse five rather. I apologize. Let this same attitude and purpose and what humble, humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Who was it in? Who exemplified this? Christ Jesus. Let him, Christ Jesus, be your example in what? Humility. Humility is what we're talking about. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, fullness or which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Look what he did. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant, a slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. And after he had appeared in human form, he abased, and he did what? Humbled Boy, that word keeps coming up, doesn't it? He did what? Humbled he humbled himself. To what? Still further and carried his obedience. Carried his obedience to what? To the extreme of death, glory to God, even the death of the cross. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that in and at the name of Jesus every knee should bow or should, must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue frankly and openly confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestion, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent, work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, and fully complete your own salvation with reverence and awe and trembling, self-distrust. What am I distrusting? Self. What am I distrusting? What am I distrusting? Self. Where does selfishness come from? Self. That's why I got to distrust self. With serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. Last verse, not in your own strength though, but 
for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the what? Shout that out loud. The what? Everybody shout that again together. What? The The power, glory to God, and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. The game changer, my friends, is humility. Everybody say humility. Humility Humility is the Christ-like grace of esteeming others more highly than yourself. Like selfishness is the root of every deal breaker in a relationship, humility also is the root of every game changer in every relationship. I'll say that again. Humility is the root that is the game changer in every relationship. You got to humble yourself. You got to humble yourself. You must say that. I got to humble myself. I got to humble myself. Yes. Humility is not insecurity. Yes. That should be tweeted. Humility, Humility is not insecurity. Is not insecurity. It's That's, not low self esteem. It's not low self esteem. It's not being poor. No. It's not thinking down of yourself. Oh, no. It's not being. Uh, uh, um, how can I say it's it? not acting like you're broke when you got money. Yeah, it's not can afford a mansion, but I'm so humble I choose to just live in this little one room house so I can be humble. Some of the most prideful people I know are poor, <laughs> and they're most a lot of times they're poor because they're prideful. They won't let anybody teach them anything. That is so they good. think they know everything, My Lord. and they resist coming under somebody else's tutelage. Well, they wear humility. Uh, uh, I should call it false humility. It's false humility. As a badge. Yeah. They wear it as a badge of 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 pridefulness. You know, I'm more humble than you. Mm Mm-hmm. Y'all remember that Pharisee? He was he was he was standing next to the guy praying, the sinner that was praying. And that Pharisee he was praying said, Lord, you know that I've done all of these things. And that sinner was beating his chest like this, going, Lord, woe is me, Lord. You don't help me. You don't help help me. me, There is no help. So humility, humility is not insecurity. True humility is the confidence and strength of knowing who you are, yet not being important in your own eyes. Humility is strength. Glory to God. Humility is strength. Say that with me. It's humility is strength. It's strength in knowing who you are, but yet choosing, say choosing, choosing to esteem others just as highly as you esteem yourself. Nobody is a less than in the humble person's eyes. In a humble person's eyes, everybody is a VIP and is treated that way. In a humble person's eyes, that's not the big deal. Everybody say the big deal. Yeah, they're, they're not, thank you, they're not the big deal in a, in a humble person's eyes. I, I was telling my wife this, have you ever been around uh, someone who is a person of status, uh, whatever we would call that status, whatever that status would look like if it's, if it's uh, means, you know, material or, or just status in terms of the, of the office that that person walk, walks in, they walk in a weighty office be it spiritual, be it, be it in the natural. If you've ever been around someone like that who walks with a, with a spirit of humility, an attitude of humility, you're almost disappointed, aren't you? Because when you, when you get around them, it's like they make you feel so important. They're not the important one. They're not the important one at that in time. Their eyes, yeah. In their mind, you're the important one. That's a great characteristic to convey to others when you're in their presence. Is that I'm not the important one here. Right now, you're the important one. (laughs) Quickly, quickly, quickly. Uh, Other people are the big deal. Say other people are the big deal. Other people are the big deal. People are attracted to people who make them feel like they're a big deal. That's why we love you all. Isn't that why we love the presence of God? 
Because when we come into the presence of God, he doesn't condemn us. He don't tear us down. And he's not trying to, uh, uh, you know, he may correct us, but he's not beating us down. He's not trying to condemn me because God already know I'm going to mess up and that I messed up and I'm going to mess up some more. Come on, somebody know what I'm saying. But when we come into the presence of God, man, sometimes why I don't want to move out of, out of his presence is because he makes me feel special. He makes me feel significant. Has anybody ever felt that way in the presence of God? He makes me feel important. He makes me feel like I'm the big deal, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, this, this, is, this is what God does. In his presence, we are loved, we are encouraged, we are strengthened, and, and we are directed. James 4 and 6 says this. God resists the proud. This, this is how God feels about pride. He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Now, my wife made, a, uh, I think, a very important observation about this uh, scripture. It says God resists. Now, resist means I don't really want to do it. Resist means I want it. I want it. <laughs> I wanna. So when I have to resist something, just like if you bring me right now uh, a red velvet cupcake, <laughs> I'm talking about right now at this very moment. I would have to resist it. Now, I'm not going to resist it after church, but I, but, but I would have to resist it right now, okay, uh, because it's not appropriate right now. But I, I, would, I would resist I really want it, but I would have to resist it. The Bible says God resists the proud. He don't, he don't want to push you away, but it's your pride that's pushing him away. Oh, oh. But it says he gives grace. Grace is not just the unmerited favor of God, but grace is, what? write this down, it is the enabling power of God. Grace is the power that flows from God. It is the ability. It is the enabling. God enables us through his grace. Say that, God enables me through his grace. God enables me through his grace. Yeah, and he says he gives grace. He gives his power through those who humble themselves, but he resists the proud. He, meaning he really wants to give you his grace. But because of pride, he's going to have to push you away. Or not push you away, but he's going to have to back out of that until pride leaves. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, be clothed with humility. Be clothed with it. Be clothed with it. Be clothed with humility. Hallelujah. Now, now this suit is not complete without this. Just like you're not complete without humility. Hallelujah. But if I'm going to finish out my wardrobe, come on, you be God today. I know I be God every, every Sunday. I, like, I, I don't mean I'm, I'm God. I like to play the, play the character of God. I want, you know, people, boy, they'll take that. Uh -huh, he said he God. I, did, I didn't say I was God. But we must let God clothe us. See, we, oh, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. We can't clothe ourselves in humility. We must allow God to clothe us in humility. You know, you can't humble yourself. I know the Bible says humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, but you can't humble yourself. What you do is you surrender and you submit to the power and to the control of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, let's finish up here. Andrew Murray. Drew, why don't you cover those quotes by Andrew Murray? Andrew Murray was a great, great man of God who's, who's deceased now and has written just wonderful, powerful classic works on prayer and just the graces of Christ and wonderful book. I would encourage, especially every person in here, you walk in a position of authority and you're one of these kind of people that Pastor was talking about. You got some status in the community or whatever on your, in the workplace. Or really husbands and wives, just anybody. Anybody. But especially if you're a person that others esteem highly, you need to read. I, I said I'm going to read every year the book Humility, Humility by, Andrew, by Murray. Andrew Murray. Read that it book. is so powerful. It's every believer needs Humility to read it. It's a Andrew classic. Murray. It's called Humility. And we were just reading through some of that this week as we were studying. This is what he says. Humility is the leaning of the entire self on God. Mm. 
That's so good. It is an utter dependence on God. It is the deep-rooted understanding that he is everything. everything. He goodness. is the supreme one, and without him, we, we are nothing. nothing and can do nothing. Say that again. This is humility. Without him. And without him, we are nothing and can do nothing. Is it is a deep-rooted understanding. It's not lip service to it, but this is, oh. is deep-rooted. And we're going to talk about how some of those roots run deep in you because some of the fires of life. My God. Well, keep proving over to you that he is God and you are not. And that gives credence to verse 13 here in mm -hmm. Philippians 2 that says, not in your own strength. Yeah. For it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, uh, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and, and to, to work or yeah. to do yeah. for his good pleasure. Right, Go ahead. right. Um, humility is the root of every virtue. Or of true power. It is the root of every root. virtue. Humility is the root. Andrew Murray said that humility is the chief grace of Jesus Christ. Mm, chief grace. It is his chief grace. It's all of his power flow through him humbling himself, through his humility. Um, Christ is the humility of God embodied in human nature. Jesus mm. was the incarnate humility. Humility is the dethronement of oh, self. self. It keeps self off the throne. Mm. And this is vital because we, we talked about a self-enthroned life will eventually self-destruct. My God. The lower nature makes a horrible governor and navigator <laughs> for our life. The self cannot be trusted that to lead so us good. to peaceful borders. It cannot be trusted. Andrew Murray also said this, the lack of humility is the efficient explanation of every lack and failure. Mm. It's the lack of humility. Pastor. This is what humility looks, looks like. I want you to write this down. Humility serves another. Humility honors another. Humility encourages another. Humility forgives. Humility seeks to understand another. One, one of the bases and premises of my and my wife's relationship is we, op we operate off of this premise every day of our lives, and those that's been around us any length of time know, know this, that we've made this our practice, is that we always seek to understand and not be understood. You know, y'all, I'm always putting myself out there on Jump Street, aren't I? You know, but uh, people are, are, are blessed by your trans transparency. Uh, and, and I'll be transparent if, if it'll help somebody. Uh, but my wife... She made me want to cuss yesterday. I mean, just say a, just say a cuss word. And, and, I, and, and I hadn't cussed in, oh, Lord. I hadn't cussed in years, like 20, 28 years. <laughs> yeah, right. Lord. And she just said, made me want to just cuss. See, this is good. I had no idea. You did a good job. And that's awesome, isn't it? No. And that's oh, awesome. wait a minute. We're doing great because I want to cuss too. <laughs> I didn't cuss it. I was thinking about it. I bet you don't even know. All right. See, everybody but we've been together together 20, 20 years. We've been together 20 years. Listen, that's great, babe. That we could both dethrone ourselves. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yes, sir. And we can say, this is not about me. <laughs> this is about understanding. And I just talked and prayed myself through it. Yes, and she, she didn't even mean nothing. She didn't mean anything. And I just, self, you know, self will always suggest selfishness. Oh, self always suggests selfishness. Self can't suggest anything other than being selfish. All right. Humility seeks to understand another. Humility pursues peace with another. Humility is loyal, is faithful to another. Humility promotes another. I got to go fast. You can, you, can, you can get your free CD immediately after service. Humility submits to another. Submits to another. Now, that's, now that's hard because some, some husbands say, I thought she was supposed to submit to me. Well, those are not correct vows. The Bible says, submit ye to one another. Submit ye 
to one another. We, the Bible says to see your wife as an equal partner spiritually. It says she is the weaker vessel. Go and, go and study out that scripture. It says she is the weaker vessel, but spiritually she is your equal. Praise God. Humility celebrates another. Celebrate. Man, people can't celebrate each other anymore. Humility celebrates. Even when I'm not the one the spotlight is shining on. Praise God. Spotlight's on Tony. Woo! Woo, Tony! Praise God, Tony! <laughs> Humility is the work. Listen, listen. In our closing, I want you to understand this. Humility is the work of the Holy Spirit. Humility is the work of the Holy Spirit in the hearts of people. No one can make themselves humble. How does one become humble? Number one, surrender and submit to the influence and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Can you put James 4 and 7 up there just, just very quickly as we close this? James chapter 4, verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, So be subject to God, resist the devil. Stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. So we surrender and submit to the influence and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Number two, Pastor Neil, why don't, why don't you cover that one? Because that one, that one really spoke volumes to you. Well, I've just seen it in my own life and in the lives of others. There's this thing called the fire of life. And the fires of life can serve as humbling agents in our life. You know, my husband teaches on those three baptisms, the baptism with the water, the baptism, the Holy Spirit. Baptism then there's the fire. baptism of fire. And the baptism of fire is when we go through the fires of life. And we've discovered that God doesn't, doesn't in bring trouble into our life just being in the world that is, is full of trouble. And because we're in the world, we're going to go through trouble. But God will use those fires in that trouble in our lives to purify us. Yes, he yes, will. Yes, and he to will. burn yes, away and will. reveal our selfish nature and, and reveal. Yes, he will. Yeah, he'll use it. He'll use it to burn away some of that pride and arrogance and self-will and strong will stuff in us and really reduce us to love. <laughs> he will use it. And so, yes, the fires of life can be a humbling agent in your life. That's why I believe he tells us to rejoice when we go through trouble. Because you're being clothed mm. with this thing called humility and it's going to ultimately increase your socks off when you get it. Yeah. Y'all know when I go to scratching my head, I got something. I just got it, I just got it, I just got it. You know, the Bible talks about cloven tongues of fire. That is how we allow God to clothe us with humility. It's when we allow God to take us through, immerse us into the fires of life, to allow us to be immersed into troubles, trials. God doesn't send them, but he certainly will use them. For, his for your advantage. And when we allow God to immerse us into the fires of life, he is, that's his way of clothing us with humility. Because you can't go through the fire and come out without a spirit of humility. If you Hallelujah. go in it with Christ. Now, because, yes. see, I know people well, if that you go, go in with, with Christ is the difference. Yes, if you go you in must, with Christ. You, if, when you walk in through the fire with Christ. With Christ. That's the difference. With the truth. With the truth. Man with the, the word. truth. Yes. The truth the of difference. the word of God. First, yes. first Peter chapter 1 verse 6 says this. You should be exceedingly glad on this account, though now for a little while you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations, so that the genuineness of your faith, the genuineness, the authenticity, you, you, you're not walking in false humility. Wow. The, the, the authenticity of your faith may be tested. Your faith, which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold, which is tested and purified, wow. your motives become pure, yeah. purified by fire. This proving of your faith is intended to redound to your praise, to your praise and glory wow. and honor when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, is revealed that the fire comes to make you look more like Jesus. Yes, it does. All right, we're going to end with this. We're going we're to end with this. 
Number three, spending time in the presence of God. The only true great one. The only true great one. Say the only true great one. The only true great one. He humbles us. It causes us to cast down our golden crowns, bow before him and realize he is the great one. Revelations chapter 4, verses uh, 9 through 11. Can you, can you put that up there very quickly? Revelations chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. And whenever the living creatures offer glory and honor and thanksgiving to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever through the eternities of the eternities, the 24 elders, the members of the heavenly Sanhedrin fall prostrate before him. Somebody bring me some chairs up here, please. About four or five of them. Uh, uh, the, the members of the heavenly Sanhedrin fall prostrate before him who is sitting on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. And they throw down their crowns before the throne crying out. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and honor and dominion, for you created all things by your will. They were brought into being and were created. Now, this is something you need to understand. I want some men to come up here and sit in these chairs, please. Or, yeah, yeah, some men. I won't, I won't use the ladies because they have dresses on, some of them. Yeah, just let's, let's get uh, each one of these chairs filled up, please, with some men. One more, please. One more. One more. Yes. Say, say that. Say that. Say I, say that. I, I can see where he's going with this. He's about to, we're about to let you into a scene of the atmosphere of heaven, of what is happening in heaven. And when this happens in your heart, you, you, are, you are ready to go to the next level. This is the game changer now, in your relationships. We don't, we, don't, we don't have time to go and read it, but if you'll go back up to verses 3 in that same chapter, Revelation 4, what, you, what you'll see is you'll, is you'll see a scene of the elders all sitting on their throne. And the one, the Bible refers to God as the one set on his throne. The one. Say the one. The one. Say I am not the one. I am not the one. The one set on his throne. The 24 elders set around the one. On their throne. On their throne. They all had thrones. Mm -hmm. And they all had crowns on their heads which means they all had authority and they had every right to sit up there and, uh, uh, and, and to demand what was entitled to them. But the Bible says that every time that the beast began to worship God, the living beast and cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, worthy to receive honor, glory, power, and dominion forever. It says as soon as that happened, what happened? I want y'all to do what happened. As soon as I began to fly around the throne, say, holy, 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 cast those crowns to the ground. Now, you immediately bow. You immediately bow. You get off your, no, 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 sir, you're the one. No, you're the one. I like your attitude, though. Now, listen, this is, this is what I need you to get, and then we're done. The Bible says this happened this never ceased. The Bible says that the living beast did it at all times. They never ceased from crying holy. Now, let's go back. Every time the living beast did it, they cast off their golden crown and they fell and bowed before the throne. Well, if the living beast never stopped, then that means they were never on their crown. Or they were never on their, on their throne. Isn't it something to have a throne but choose not to sit on it? I said, isn't it something to have a throne and choose not to sit on it? That's what Jesus did. He, he counted it, not robbery, to be equal with God because he was. But yet he did not grasp, he did not try to hold on to his equality. But he stripped himself of his glory. And he became as like one of us. Lord have mercy. I believe he did that to come show us how to walk in glory. How to experience massive success and happiness in life. How to be clothed in humility. Would you stand to your feet if that word bless you and give God mighty hand clap of praise? Come on.